All right, pre-calc friends, we're at the absolute end. This is the end of 6.6, .6, the last two problems. So again, to summarize, we just did number 11, which just had to isolate the trig, get by itself. Number 12, we thought of this as a quadratic, so we factored it. And then remember that cosine and sine, your answers always have to be between one and negative one. So if you ever find that the cos or sine equals a number outside that range, you can just cross that option out. You don't have to use it. You actually saw that before a long time ago. I don't know if you remember, but when we were playing with law of sines and we we're trying to figure out how many triangles you would get, do you remember when you would get an error on the calculator and you say, oh, that's because there's zero triangles. We didn't really say exactly why, but we just said, that's probably what Mr. Brown says. And you were absolutely right. And the reason was you were probably taking the sine inverse of a number that was bigger than one or smaller than negative one. And that's what gave you an error. So it's exactly what's happening here. If you ever see that the cosine or sine is bigger than one or less than negative one, you can just cross that option out. All right, the last two here's number 13. Number 13 is a lot like number 12, actually, because it has trig that's being squared over here and over here. So I could think about trying to factor it. Now, this says that we're going to be in radians, but just to make it easier, let's just do it in terms of degrees. That's okay. A little bit easier than radians anyway. Okay, well, we're stuck here because there are one, two different types of trig functions here, and that's really tough because then we can't treat it like it was number 12. Because number 12 had only one trig type, a cosine, we could factor it like normal. And I really want to factor 13 because there are squares and there are not squares, so I'm thinking about factoring. But uh, there's too many trigs here. So I give a really big hint here off to the side. It'd be really good if I could change one of these trigs into its other friend using the Bible so I only have one trig to play with. Now, we have to think about it. Would you rather, this is the weirdest would you rather game, would you rather change cosine squared into, do you remember the Bible? Cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. There you go. Or would you rather change the sine squared into, do you remember? One minus cos squared. Either one is absolutely legal, whichever one you want to do. Notice that the sine here in the middle is not squared, so I cannot use the Bible. Well, if I change the sine squared into one minus cos squared, will I have all the same trig? Mm, I would have a cosine squared. I would have a cosine squared up here, but I'd still have that darn sine. And I can't change that sine because he's not squared. So I think this option would not be as good. Look at here. What if I changed my cos squared into one minus sine squared? I'd have a sine squared here. I'd have a sine up here and I have a sine squared. This would work. This would be the best. So when you use the Bible to change things into other trigs, make sure you change the right term so that you really do have all of the same trig. All right, let's do that right now. So the one we're going to change is the cosine squared. Let's do that down here on the bottom. So we said the sine squared is going to stay there. Minus the sine of x, which we couldn't change, equals. Now instead of cosine squared, I'm going to put by the Bible, 1 minus sine squared. Oops, I put x. Now just looking at that, do you notice that everything is the same trig? That's great. Okay, now we're going to think about factoring this, but before we do this, we do have to get everything on one side of the equation. We have to always set things equal to zero before we think about factoring. Okay, I'm running out of room, so he's going to move a little bit up here. So I'm going to have, when I add the sine squared, I already have one sine squared over here, so now I have two sine squared x. I have the minus sine x still there. And then when I subtract the one over, I should get minus one equals zero. There we go. So there's my quadratic and I need to factor it. If you want to think of it in terms of just pure algebra, this would be like a two X squared minus one X minus one. That's kind of what we're trying to factor. It's just instead of X's here, we've actually got signs, but it's basically the same idea. If you feel like you could factor this equation in blue, then you can factor this one up above it. So I'm running out of space, so I'm going to move over to another page here for you. Okay, so 
So off to the side, I'll factor it using x's if that's a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, this would be factoring by grouping, which we practiced a little bit the other day. So I'm gonna go right to the answer. But remember guys, if you're ever still having trouble with it, please let me know and I can work on it with you next help. All right, that's how the factoring is gonna go here. So I'm just gonna go right back over here and plug that right in. So instead of two x plus one, I'm gonna say two sine x plus one, and not x, but sine x minus one. And just like in regular algebra, I can always double check this factoring by foiling it out and see if it works. Now, oops, I gotta make sure he equals zero. That means either this peak is equal to zero, and we'll solve him, or this piece equals zero and we'll solve him. Let's take the first one. How about two sine x plus one equals zero? Well, when we move all the furniture around and get the sine by itself, sine x should be equal to negative one half. I'll give you a second just to think about around our unit circle, where is the sine equal to negative one half? I'm thinking maybe quadrants three and four. I got, and I got, I hope you did too. All right, that first one is done. Let's go over here. If we solve this, this is sine x minus one, also equals zero, so therefore sine of x equals one. Look around a unit circle, and actually this only happens in one spot. Do you find it? There it is. So how many answers total on this one? We've got two from here, one from here. This one has three answers. So again, to recap, what we did first, guys, is we noticed that there were not all the same trig in this original problem. We were kind of stuck because there were sines and there were cosines. So we used our friend the Bible, or we used Pythagorean equations to help us switch one trig into another one. And we picked the right one. Once we did that, we could just factor using our factoring skills and solving. And there's number 13. All right, take a breath as we approach our last problem. Number 14. Number 14 works kind of the same way as number 13 and 12 in the fact that it'd be really great if I can make this all into one trig, but instead of thinking of that, you know what I noticed just by looking at both sides? I noticed that we have the same thing on both sides. There's a sine of x on both sides. Huh. And a lot of times in math, if we have the same term on both sides, we're really tempted to just divide them both out from both sides. And if I divide them both from both sides, I would just be left with tan of x equals three and I could try to solve that. But you know what? I'm actually not allowed to do that. I can't really divide by sine here. And I put that off to the side. Here is a little trick and a little hint for you. We can't divide by sine. The reason is what if? What if sine equals zero? What if that was actually one of our options that came out? That means you are literally dividing each piece here by zero. Ooh, and that's bad, right? Because remember we can never divide by zero. So you don't ever want to ever, ever, ever divide by a trig. So the best thing to do, why don't we just go ahead and set everything equal to zero by moving things around. Let's see what I get. If I move the three sine x over and see what happens, I get the sine of x times the tan of x minus three sine of x equals zero. Okay, that's a good first step. Not dividing, but just subtracting and get that. But again, do you notice I have the same trig in both of these terms. Here's our first term and here's our second term. And notice they both have a sign in common. That's really good because if you notice that, we can also, because look and see what they have in common. So this kind of factoring is not the same factor we did the last two problems. This is GCF factoring. So a good star in your notes for that. Look and see, do you have the same trig, not say squared, but just the same trig in both terms. And if we do, we can factor it out. Let's do it. If I factor a sine x out of both terms, what do I get? Okay, if I divide a sine x out of this first term, he is gone and I'm left with tan x. Okay. And if I divide and factor out a sine x from the second term, he is gone and I'm left with that. And now he's completely factored and that's exactly what we want. So I did a GCF factoring here, and I got two pieces that equal zero. So we can keep going, like we're down my factored. We'll set this one equal to zero, and we'll set this one equal to zero. All right, let's set each one at a time. 
let's say sine of x equals zero. Well, we can go right to the end for this one. Where does sine equal zero? You look around your unit circle, and that's at zero and pi. Now, can we include two pi? I'm gonna go up to the top and just see. You know, up here, it actually says it cannot equal 360, so I'm not gonna put two pi. And in fact, if it says 360, folks, I should have used degrees. That's lazy. So how about zero degrees, 180 degrees, and not 360? Okay, over here, if we set this equal to zero, then I have the tan of x minus three equals zero, so tan equals three. Now, that's not a normal number on a unit circle, and it is bigger than one, but remember we said it's only worried about if sine or cosine is bigger than one, then we're in trouble. Tan is actually okay, and the reason why tan is okay, if you think up here to the normal tan graph, remember how the tan graph went really, really low and really, really high? So honestly, yeah, if this would say three up here, is there a spot where the tan equals three? Sure, so the tan doesn't have to follow this rule over here. The tan could be any number at once. Well, again, it's not in our unit circle, so gosh, I guess we're gonna have to just take the inverse. Let's see what that gives you. Okay, I've got my handy dandy calculator nearby. Let me plug this in my calc in degree mode. The tan inverse of three is about 71 point, oops, 71 point, mm, technology, 71.6 degrees. That's great. But going back to the beginning of this section, you got to think about where else is tan 71.6 degrees. Sorry, where else is tan equal to 3? What other quadrant is tan positive? So we already picked up here the fact where he is 71.6. But where else is tan a positive number? And he's also positive down here in the third quadrant. Remember how we did the same reference angle? There we go. So we did this whole diagram of from zero, how can I find that second angle? 71.6 was my first one, but how do I find the second one? This one, it looks like I passed through a whole 180 and then I added another 71.6. So my second answer over here would be 251.6 degrees. Final answer, I got one, two answers over here and one, two answers over here. One of them used a calculator and one of them didn't need to. Recap, ready? Number 14, you notice on number 14 that first of all, it was not like number 12 or 13. There's nothing being squared, but you did notice that there are the same trig in two different pieces. You didn't want to divide it out, but you wanted to think about maybe trying to get them to the same side of the equation and trying to factor by GCF and then solving from there. One way without a calculator, mental math, and the other way using a calculator, but that goes back to like the first five or six problems at the beginning of the section. This is the end of section 6.6. .6. Congrats, folks. You made it to the end of chapter six. Super proud of you. Let's review.